We're in the later half of the Ghost of Molly McGee season 2, so now is a great time to talk about what makes this season, and the show in general, so great. The Ghost of Molly McGee season 1 is about Molly, who wants to spread joy wherever she goes, and Scratch, who must spread misery or be sent to the flow of failed phantoms. Throughout the season, Scratch and Molly become best friends and even family. In the end, Molly defeats the evil chairman. Season 1 was amazing and heartwarming, but when it wrapped up, I couldn't help but wonder what exactly season 2 could hold. Just more shenanigans? Because as far as plot goes, everything seemed pretty tied up. The chairman's defeated, the family's together, and they all lived, or after lived, happily ever after. Where do you even go from here? Then season 2 arrived and instantly proved that there's so much more story to tell. It does an amazing job not only expanding on plot lines from season 1, but also introducing new storylines that fit into the concept of the show. A lot of events in season 2 are ramifications of pre-established story beats in season 1. Whether it be an expanded storyline or a new storyline, it fits into the whole of the show and feels like a realistic follow-up to season 1. The new Paranormal is a perfect season 2 premiere. Season 1 left us off with the McGees finally together, happy to live in their forever home. So for season 2 to succeed, it needed to show us that it had a strong story worth continuing the show. And it went above and beyond when doing that. Kicking off a new season with a double-length episode, that's like when you see the second book in the series is actually thicker than the first book. It's an instant sign that the writers have a lot to say. Everything that makes season 2 great is in this first episode. It immediately sets the standard for a season that does not disappoint. Expanded storylines. These are storylines that follow directly from plot points in season 1. Jinx as a villain. After Jinx's appearance in the last episode of season 1, she returned in season 2 in the episodes The Afterlife of the Party and Jinx, appearing as an antagonist, messing with Scratch and petty attempts at revenge for him and Molly vanquishing the one true chairman. Jinx becoming a reoccurring antagonist is a great expansion for season 2. The Chairman. I wondered what they are going to do now that the chairman is dead. What are the ramifications of that? How will the ghost world function now? And what they did is the best thing they could have possibly done with the storyline. Scratch becomes the new chairman by default. It is immensely satisfying to see him go from the bottom of the social food chain to the king of all ghosts. And I like that they made him chairman because it shows complexity. The chairman is not an inherently evil and bad position. And now we have our main character in the same position as the villain, while still being a good guy, which is really interesting. Side note, but the fact that Scratch doesn't want to be the chairman shows development from season 1. There's no way the beginning of season 1 Scratch would pass up the opportunity to have people at his beck and call. Remember the episode The Internship in season 1? In this episode, Scratch gets authority over an intern and uses the intern, who then gets promoted and ends up being Scratch's boss. Scratch's abuse of power backfired on him. I think this is part of why he doesn't jump at being chairman and is more hesitant of the responsibility than eager for the power. He has grown in multiple ways since season 1. And then the fact that he actually accepts being the chairman anyway, normally taking up the role would be seen as corrupting himself and he would not accept being the chairman, but he does accept it, and that is so much more interesting. The flow of failed phantoms. Also, not only that, but we also have the Frightmares and Lord Doom, who escaped from the flow of failed phantoms. And these ghosts are evil, well, the Frightmares are, Lord Doom eventually reformed. Which shows a lot of complexity too, because it's not like the chairman was just a dictator who sent a bunch of innocent people to the flow of failed phantoms. He was that. But there were also ghosts who did need to be locked up, and that just shows a lot of thought went into the story. Nothing's black and white. They are very intentionally building this plotline of the fact that the flow of failed phantoms actually kind of had a point in existing. Obviously, the OTC abused this power and put pretty much anyone in there that didn't perform exactly perfectly, and a fate of swirling torture is obviously cruel. But I think that's where the ghost hunters come in. They're going to turn good and then use their stuff to contain the bad ghost, so Scratch doesn't have to make another flow of failed phantoms. New storylines. These are storylines that are introduced this season, but still make sense as part of the greater whole. Ghost Hunters. Speaking of Ghost Hunters, let's talk about the Ghost Hunters. This is one of the new storylines introduced in Season 2, and while it is new, it still makes sense with the story set up in Season 1. For who knows how long, ghosts have been tasked to scare people, because misery fed the old chairman. If they didn't do their job of spreading misery, they would be sent to the flow of failed phantoms, basically eternal torment. So, obviously, they didn't have a choice. Ghosts have been scaring people for a long time. The ghost hunters existing is cool and makes sense, since we already established in Season 1 that ghosts are forced to scare people, so it's understandable that a person who got scared by a ghost in the past may want to do something about it. So, we have the Jens, the McGee's new neighbors who are ghost hunters. Reuben was scared by a ghost as a child, so now he has become a ghost hunter and raised his children with his wife as ghost hunters as well. It's a new spin having a threat coming from humans as a result of ghosts, as opposed to the villain in Season 1, who was a ghost. Scratch is past. Another new element added to the story this season is the mystery of Scratch's past. I have to say this plotline is the best new story element in Season 2. It's heartfelt and emotional, and it makes Molly and Scratch foil each other even more. In Season 1, they were opposites because Molly is happy and wants to spread joy, and Scratch is grumpy and needs to spread misery. Then they find out they have more in common than they thought. 
But now they mirror each other even more. Molly has lost many friends because she moved away, and Scratch lost his best friend because she moved away. They're on opposite sides of the situation. It makes it all even more personal. The fact that Scratch is haunting Adia's house, and he doesn't even remember why, he just knows that this is his house, he lives in the attic where they used to play together, where now Molly lives, and showing how Scratch hides its problems and pushes them down, he represses his memories so much he literally forgot his life. This is all just good storytelling. It's emotional. It's perfect. Ah, I'm such a nerd about this! Let's talk a bit more about how Season 2 follows up Season 1. Season 1 focused on the villain, the chairman. The chairman and the threat of the flow of failed phantoms are the stakes. Meanwhile, however, Season 2 doesn't focus on a villain, but instead more on the characters, the world, and the effects they have on each other. I thought Jinx might return to be the main villain of Season 2 and be present in causing problems throughout the whole season like the stakes in Season 1, but I'm glad she's not. Even if she ends up being the villain of the finale, I'm glad we're not focusing on her throughout the whole thing. I like her as an antagonist that shows up occasionally. If she were to be a big deal villain throughout most of the season, it would have felt like they were just copying the season 1 plot structure but replacing the chairman with Jinx. Instead, the plot of season 2 isn't villain focused. It's a whole different format. Rather than focus on the threat Jinx may pose, or even the threat the ghost hunters pose, we focus instead on other plot lines. Scratch's backstory and emotional state, Ollie's changing worldview, Molly having a crush, Scratch being the new chairman, and Molly still trying to make the world a better place. Season 2 doesn't exactly have one plot, which I think irks some people because they would rather have a more focused, serialized story with clear stakes. But the plot of the show is the adventures of the ghost of Molly McGee, so whether those adventures are defeating a villain or dealing with the fact that you repress the memories of your entire life, it's still the ghost of Molly McGee. Tonal change. One of the best things about The Ghost of Molly McGee is that it's a kid's show, but it's not afraid to deal with heavier topics, and it deals with them really well. For example, in Season 1, the McGees are having financial troubles and get evicted. This is not something that would normally happen in a kid's show, but it happens in The Ghost of Molly McGee. That's because the show is grounded in reality. It's not about being happy when everything is good. It's about even when life is hard and misery may seem to be everywhere, you need to look on the bright side and remember that joy is stronger than misery. It's about being optimistic in the real world, and the characters are going to deal with real problems. That's one of the best things about the show, is that it feels real. Season 2 has gone even farther than Season 1, and has dealt with even more heavy topics, and it handles it beautifully. It deals with Libby's father being neglectful, it deals with Scratch repressing his memories and ignoring his problems, it deals with Ollie inheriting prejudice and having to completely relook his worldview, and more. Season 2 has a slightly darker tone than Season 1. For example, I Want to Dance with Some Molly has Scratch and Molly having their first real fight, and in Frightmares on Main Street, Molly and Ollie have a bad fight. Then of course we have the episode The Unhaunting of Brighton Video, which has Ollie's breakdown, and this is very important, a serious discussion of death. Death is obviously a part of the story, as Scratch wouldn't be a ghost if he wasn't dead, but they never actually talk about it. In fact, death is actually a reoccurring gag. So not only in Season 1 is death not really talked about, it only shows up as a joke. And yet, in this episode, we have Blair, a ghost who talks about dying, and it's... It's not taken lightly. They just say it. And it's sad. She died young, as a young adult, or maybe even a teenager. And yes, season one did have its more serious moments, but this season is being darker more frequently. I think this is building towards us eventually learning how Scratch died, probably by the end of the season. This slight tonal shift is enough to show us that we are getting deeper into our characters' emotional states, but it doesn't feel like a dark, edgier season two or something. It's still the same show as season one, it's just not afraid to get more deep. What else makes this season great? The Ghost of Molly McGee season two also has some of my favorite individual episodes. Davenport's and Demise shows Andrea having self-doubt and struggling with her identity, something everyone who has ever been alive can relate to. Like Father Like Libby just makes me cry. 100% Molly McGee is a beautiful lesson on cultural identity. A period piece casually talks about periods, something we need more of on television. A soda to remember and all in the mind give us emotional development for Scratch. And Web of Lies is just a riot. I love Molly and Scratch being a duo of pure chaos. There are some really great episodes in this season. Ones like 100% Molly McGee in a period piece just shows what it feels like being a kid. And I think that can be appreciated by anyone, even people who haven't watched the rest of the show. It's just good television. Even individually, the episodes are just good stories. That goes for season one as well, but season two even more so. Season two also has some really bop songs. For example, all the songs from the previously mentioned episodes are all some of my favorites, as well as, of course, Ghosts Aren't the Enemy and Enjoy Your Afterlife. Arguing against complaints. Now let's talk about the complaints. 
people have about the season and why I personally disagree with these complaints. Ollie. A lot of people hate on the season because of one character, Ollie. He doesn't deserve the hate. People are hating on him and by extension calling the show bad, but he is not even that big of a character, and to say he is messing everything up when he's barely even around is just giving negative feedback to a great show for no reason. I like Ollie. I will say that I don't particularly care for his romance with Molly. I argue that Ollie and his romance with Molly actually need more screen time, not less. They just need more development. Even though I don't love their romance, I will stand by the show and against the hate for it. There's not liking Ollie, there's not liking Molly, and then there's totally disrespecting the show and saying it's ruined because of that. Pacing. Some people have issues with the pacing of the season. I think this complaint is actually just wanting to see more of the Ghost Hunters and being upset about how little we've seen of them so far. But you have to keep in mind that the Ghost Hunter stuff is a subplot, and the point of the subplot isn't actually how or why Reuben and Esther ghost hunt, but more how their prejudice affects their children. The focus of the storyline isn't actually about these two trapping ghosts, but rather how Ollie will respond to finding out he's been lied to his whole life and how Scratch and Molly will respond to being neighbors with ghost hunters. And while I do think we will see Reuben and Esther play some sort of role and create more conflict in the finale, I'm not super upset about how little time we've got with them so far since, again, the plotline isn't about them. It's about how their actions affect them, Ollie, Molly, and Scratch. All that being said, pacing is something where you just can't please everyone. So I, I can't exactly say the pacing is perfect and anyone that says otherwise is wrong, but I can say the pacing works for me. Scratch being the new chairman. Some people are upset about Scratch being the new chairman. Sometimes this is because they are upset with what little time we had with the old chairman and the fact that we still don't understand what exactly was up with him. While the chairman isn't supposed to be a long-term villain, he is a symbol of misery that Molly has to defeat for the arc of the story in season one to show the message that joy is more powerful than misery. We're not supposed to understand him. He was a simple villain and now he's defeated. Ghost lore isn't the point of the show anyways. People get upset about how little time we have in the ghost world, but like, the show's not about the ghost world. Also, if you are looking for what was up with the chairman, I would guess he's sort of like a Howling Harriet situation. While Howling Harriet and Blair were consumed by the desire to complete their unfinished business in the human world, I would guess that the chairman was a ghost who got consumed by his own messed up misery and now has become a monster who feeds on sadness. Another reason people don't like Scratch being the chairman is because he technically didn't defeat the chairman. Molly did. Well, Molly can't be the chairman because she's not dead and is most certainly not going to become a wraith forever so she can be ruler of a realm as a 13 year old. She's got a life to live. The third reason people don't like Scratch being the chairman is because they say it just doesn't make sense. Why did the ghost need a chairman? Why should it be Scratch? How much authority does he hold as the chairman? The ghosts do need a chairman, because only the chairman holds the authority to cast strong enough curses to keep evil ghosts such as the Frightmares at bay. As for why it should be Scratch, because it goes to whoever defeats the last chairman, and since it can't be Molly, it goes to Scratch. As for how much authority the chairman holds, pretty much all of it. It just depends on how much he wants to use it. For example, he uses curses against evil ghosts like the Frightmares when he sticks them inside June's ghost trap, but he isn't using his full power against Blair, who is not evil and just has unfinished business. If Scratch were to use his full power to solve every problem, then that would just be plot convenience. The last reason people are upset about Scratch being the chairman is people just complain that Scratch is a bad leader. Yes, he's supposed to be. He's neglectful of his duties and he doesn't take the job seriously. That's the point. It's intentional. And I imagine they'll do something with that by the end. I'm sorry, I just can't imagine being upset about Scratch being the chairman. This is like the coolest thing in the world to me. I love characters being given ultimate power, especially characters who are unwilling and don't want ultimate power. Like, it's so interesting. It's so interesting. It's fascinating. Urgh! I love the show. And I also love how Scratch, as the chairman, his, his proportions are not consistent. Like, he'll have, sometimes he'll have really long arms. Sometimes he'll be, like, smaller and just look like himself, but with a cloak on. Sometimes he'll be big and monstrous. Sometimes he'll look exactly like the old chairman does. I love that they didn't settle on a look because it just adds to the supernatural feeling of the chairman when he has no consistent appearance. In a nutshell, this show is so good. The art style is great, the animation is smooth, I love the colored lines in the art, they just make the movement look even more slick and buttery somehow. The story is heartfelt, it's emotional and sweet, the world is well thought out, the humor is funny, the characters feel like real people, it's just a great show. Well, I think that covers my review for season 2 of The Ghost of Molly McGee. All in all, it's an amazing season. It expanded on the story from season 1 and has brought up so much deep story, character development, and complexity. I feel like this is one of the strongest points of season two. Everything is complex. The chairman was evil, but that doesn't make the chairman an inherently evil position. The flow of Veiled Phantoms was cruel and evil, but there were ghosts that needed to be locked up. Ollie may be a ghost hunter, but his prejudice comes from being raised in that environment, and that's not his fault. Reuben and Esther may be ghost hunters, but they're not monsters. They still have good inside of them, they just have a very wrong perception of ghosts. Good people can do bad things. That's something that I love that this show is, 
it's tackling because it's such an interesting thing that people don't talk about a lot. It's just, it's such a good topic for the show to cover. And since season one was villain focused, I love season two's format of focusing instead on characters and how they deal with what life throws at them. The Ghost of Molly McGee is an amazing show. Both season one and season two are amazing.